All right, back at the garden again. I think I'm just gonna kind of walk around and eat a couple things out of here. But I am gonna do this little technique that um, I learned from M.I. Gardener. Give the tomato flowers a little flick to drop that pollen in there and you won't lose any flowers and you'll have a nice full fruit set. Uh, looks like these are doing good. A little bit of cuke action, cucumbers. This is more, this is that uh, self heal I was talking about. It's got good oils in it. It's not really flavorful, but it definitely has a lot of, uh, like I said, good oils kind of give good glide to your body. Definitely a good just ingredient to toss into the tea. Got a little uh, plantain here. This is the northern version, not the South American banana kind of plantain. Identifying key identifying factors is that when you pull these off, these little veins come out. This is supposed to be good for uh, general vitality. Good for just about everything. Also has those good oils in it, and uh, can make a nice sun sun burn remedy with it. Probably use a, a good oil to extract it into something clean. This is just one of my favorite herbs. Cilantro. Some people, it's either a love or hate, it seems like. Love it or hate it. But I think it's one of the best. It's a really cooling herb. Um, I, I've i used it as a tea before to <clears throat> just buy a whole bundle from the grocery store make a make a tea out of it don't don't boil it just bring it up to where it's about to take it off and um, it's good for clearing out heavy metals and and kind of of a detox a little bit of a detox thing that happens with the uh, cilantro which is really good good for you good to clear it out and definitely good to to do something like charcoal a little bit of charcoal with it just to absorb some of that crap that that happens to uh, come out of your muscles and out of your tissues there's some tall onions blooming what am i eating here that's a uh, curly dock yellow dock um the leaves are good when they're this young Obviously the bugs love them, bug bites all over them, but I'll share, I'm not too worried about it. This is definitely one of my favorites here, but um, for some reason, oh yeah, that taste is really banging today. I haven't had a real good taste profile on this plant yet, so today she's kicking ass. Good for the nervous system. Just like this. This is definitely one of my favorite herbs. There's rosemary here. I always just try and pick a couple off the bottom, clean it up a little bit. You know, not take the whole plant, especially if I'm just kind of picking around. Get a little dirt on the bottom ones, but that's no big deal. <laughs> Of course, we got some oregano down here we're going to pick on. I'll try and take the leaves that are a little... Of course, you know, that can be hit or miss, too. <laughs> you might be getting something you don't want. A little sage, a little sage. We can burn a little sage. It's really good at clearing the air energetically. If you do ever get a chance to uh, burn a little sage, it, it just clears out a lot of that negativity. And it just... <laughs> I don't know, it just clears the air, clears the air energetically. Uh, definitely one of my other favorite edibles. These leaves are just tasty. They're like a... I say they got like a lemony flavor, but without the citrus to them. And there's no kind of oxalic acid taste like you get with eating clover. 
Hopefully the whole plant doesn't come off. Good, I just got a little bit. These clovers are definitely good. I've been doing a little trimming on these goldenrod here. Just uh, let the air come through a little bit. Let the light come through a little bit more. Harvesting it back from the bottom. Because the leaves will die from the bottom as this plant gets older. Um, and these leaves are edible, but you definitely want to cook them. They, uh, they're just a little tough, you know, they're hard, so you want to break them down with a little bit of heat. But the flowers are edible once they, once they start coming in. You can eat those right off the plant. Definitely astringent, definitely have a dry, to, dry taste to them. Um, but a really good tea ingredient, flavorful, and it's got a lot of good things going on with it, just like this plant does. This is St. John's wort, of course. I was trying to plant this in here and, and just taking cuttings. I took a couple cuttings and put them in a pot, and the pot just didn't, um, it was dry, just up out of the bed. It was in the bed, but it was just dry um, now. I do want to say that this does come with a sun warning, <laughs> this plant. If you, t if you take too much of it and you're out in the sun or you're sensitive to the chemicals in there, the hyperiacin is what I believe it is, I would highly recommend against maybe just staying away from this herb. It's powerful. Um, it can be used for different skin ailments and stuff. If you made it, you probably added it to a, uh, a nice mix of things to, to rub on, like that plantain would be excellent. Even this goldenrod. Goldenrod can be good. Uh, the leaves good for that. But uh, one day I was, I, I found this at a friend's house, and I was doing a job for him out in the sun, trimming his pond up. And I must have picked, I don't know, three dozen of these flowers and it was just coming in through my fingers and I'm probably the second time I'd ever ran into the herb and tried it and I had about three flowers you know cut the stalk to try and bring the stalk home so I was getting the stuff all over my fingers and I was out in the sun for <clears throat> hours hours next to the pond and boy uh, was I tweaking I was very tweaky uh, almost to the point where I couldn't talk just like too much going on vibrating at a really high frequency um, so definitely want to be careful with this particular herb if you're using it in heavy doses it's definitely not one to play with too hardcore that is I love these guys over here let's get a good one nice red clover You can tell that it's just high in minerals and it's got a lot of good things going for it. Really great flavor. Really probably, um, I have had it in teas before. It makes a nice tea ingredient. Um, stores pretty well. Dried everything. I dried just about everything. Beans climbing up like I want them. Tomatoes looking green. More cilantro that got seeded over here. Beans. This lettuce down here is pretty good, but I'm going to have to actually cut it back and make a snack. I'm pretty sure I got some, uh, I think these are strawberries, but the wild strawberries that I find are never this tall. And they're usually really little, uh, probably at the end of the season for those. Yeah, that lettuce over there has got a... A lot more heavy flavor than you'll find at the store because uh, flat out at the store they just don't you know when you're mass cropping especially if you're doing it in the same place you're gonna lose nutrients eventually and it's gonna have that blander taste so everything that you eat right out of the ground is gonna taste more rich more micronutrients more nutrient dynamic uh, just all around going to be better for you. So I always try and every day just to pick a little bit. Um, let's take a look from the back side. I've got my heavenly blue morning glories. Do 
There's some sweet potatoes I'm trying this year. More tomatoes back here. Nice uh, three, I think it was three beans in one container. So they're starting to climb. Nice big pile of them. This is that horseradishy taste in herb. It's called Shepherd's Purse. It's got a bite. Be careful. Got a little bit of a horseradish bite. I love it. I love it actually. Um, lamb's quarters. Nutrient dynamic. Uh, basically like a live spinach. You can just continue to pick off. There's some better looking leaves in here. You definitely, you know, that's not A plus stuff right there. But you can get a lot of good uh, uses out of that. Definitely good, just like spinach, cook it, whatever. Soup greens. Uh, let's finish this up and do a bonus kind of thing with these berries. I already picked some earlier from my plants down there on the other side of the hedgerow. But it's about time for these to start coming in. They're going to come in, you know, sporadically. If I have a few every day, share some with the birds. Everybody will be happy. Oh, yeah. It's a little afternoon, so they're not quite as bitey on the flavor, but, man, that is delicious. Mm, I see one way down here. Mm, a couple. So, it speaks to the idea that you want to have some a variety of crops or a variety of plants to be choosing from, a variety of berries, you know, so that you're not overwhelmed all at once when it comes time to harvest.